Hi guys, this is Professor Tom Biondolillo from the Art Institute of Atlanta Media Arts Animation Department. Um, we've just gone through part one of our next milestone animation where we're gonna be doing the flower sack animation or classic animation like all the basic ones we've done in this intro to animation course so far. You've already got a good foundation and the basic working of layers and frames, tools and property boxes and so on involved in creating an animation. An animation. So we're looking at that as something that uh, I'll be reminding you of, but I expect you to be doing it now as a, as a third and fourth experience. So make sure that you continue to sharpen up those technical uh, skills of yours, all right? But this is a new use and a new content, and we're really gonna be rolling on into animation and expressing ourselves, all right, with this animation. Uh, the first ones have been kind of just pat uh, follow through animations, the pendulum, the bouncing ball, some squash and stretch and morphing animations up to this point. But now we're gonna use all of that to put some personality into this otherwise inanimate object, a flower sack, all right? You've gone ahead in the previous discussions and you've, uh, you've researched and uh, copied and linked some of your favorite uh, other uh, flower sack animations in there. We've had a good discussion and looked over those. You found reference, which is also a proper uh, part of the pipeline, the concepting pipeline. You have decided in a, in a written statement what you're gonna be doing for this simple little animation. It's still a narrative. We still need to follow through and plan for it, but now you've got a good, a good uh, direction of where we're gonna go. And now we're gonna go ahead and use those skills to do this next animation. All right, so to begin with, I've drawn up a little guy up here, our flower sack. I've kind of given him a torso like we've talked about before. It's not a full character, but we're gonna give him all the life we can, all right? It doesn't matter the character, it's the life or the the, the anima, the breath of that, that animation is, the word animation is based off of that life. We need to give it uh, a personality. We need to give it um, a feeling of, of, of power and movement and, and even emotion. And this is where your real animation starts. The story starts here. And we don't need a full-blown character with armor and swords and all the stuff I'm sure, and I'm sure you're waiting to get on into. We just need to know how to, how to make this thing come alive and create that illusion of life that Disney talked about so much in, in his book. All right. So I've drawn up our basic character here. I've done it in a series of ways that we've already talked about. So I'm going to remind you. All right. I'm going to turn off my arrows. I'm going to turn off my cleanup. So this is a rough. It's a nice clean rough. Don't be worried if your rough is very liony and not as, as, as economized and, and simplified as mine is. That's fine. Everybody will have their own style of roughing. And of course, I point out when things need to be better. All right, so we've got our little rough here, okay? So we rough things out, all right? And we do procedures within the rough. We then will clean up those things, all right? Here's the cleanup, all right? The cleanup comes last, okay? We don't waste any cleanup time until we've roughed things out perfectly. But to begin a rough, let's remind ourselves too, we do keys, the most important steps in creating that animation. I've got a series of, of jumping. I've got some things we're gonna, going to want to fix once I start animating, all right? But as I've taught you before, we want to do our basic keys, even in very thumbnail form, across a single piece of paper and just see it all, the entire arc of time, step by step of what our character is going to be doing. I already know and looking at this, which is important, that's why we do this, that this first one I want to change. Maybe I'll get more of kind of a, an anticipation or, a, or a, re, a recoiling before he springs up here because I'm going to be doing a simple jump, all right? You may be doing something else, but nonetheless. So I'm missing that anticipatory or that squash before the jump, all right? Notice also I'm always using those, that animation jargon, the animation language, which, which uh, deals with both the procedure and also the art form of animation found in the principles of animation. So I'm using follow through and arc and timing and, and so on. Okay, so I've done all of these step by step as I will set them up. Now they belong in 
frames. We'll set that up in the next animation for you, okay? But to begin with, let me get my arrows and I'll even throw my cleanup, all right? Back up there. Let's do it. All right, and are they all up there? Yep, they're all up there. Okay, so we want this animation as you develop your keys, squashing and stretching, and this could probably be a little more exaggerated too. A lot of you guys really, as I look at your animations, you wanna push it already, which is wonderful, okay? I kept this a little more just mechanical movement, all right? It's not jumping all over the place and squashing and stretching like Tex Avery. Uh, an old-fashioned animator you probably know of, uh, did with his squash and stretch. He was the king of squash and stretch and exaggeration. But nonetheless, these arrows indicate uh, um, that I want a lot of movement of planes, all right? I want a lot of bending and stretching and twisting, all right? But the one thing, as we've talked about before, that as things move and stretch and, and, and squash, um, they don't lose any volume. All right, it stays the same. None of that disappears off into Dimension X, and we don't suddenly get a character twice as big either. All right, so we've got to continue to wrangle with that. So when we squash and stretch or bend or whatever it might be, we need to keep on model, keep the volume consistent. Again, those terms from your term list, we continue to use those. So we build up not only our technique, but our mind and our language as a professional. All right, so we've got them here. These will be in the next animation, the next, excuse me, um, movie. We'll go ahead and I'll just, if I've done them well, I can cut and paste them in there, okay? Into the next frames, all right? So we're gonna separate these out into the next frames. All right, let me see if there's anything else I wanna go over here. Nope, so this is a good setup sheet. All right, for the next discussion, you'll be building that, that setup sheet with your initial keys, and they might only be three or four or five. That's all keys have to be. We fill in the breakdown poses in between, which might be anywhere from three to four to five in between, and you can see how very quickly four or five keys become uh, a breakdown animation in a line test of 20 to 30, okay? But we set up that initial plan with those keys. So go ahead and uh, drop any, uh, any uh, discussion notes on in there to me or to your fellow uh, students. Uh, email me if you have any questions, all right? But get going on this first increment of our, of our flower sack animation, all right? By setting up and developing your keys along, uh, 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 by following the plan that you've already put down in the discussion previous. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next part and in the next class. Bye.